What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. WBC heavyweight champion Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury, and former WBC heavyweight champion, a boxer who defended his WBC title successfully 10 times, Deontay, the Bronze Bomber Wilder, will come face to face in a press conference that will happen next Tuesday to kick off their trilogy. June 15th to be exact. The press conference is going to be epic. As you know, both of these guys don't care for each other, especially when you talk about Deontay Wilder. He feels that Fury did a lot of illegal tactics in the lead up to the second fight, and he's ready to exact revenge. And he'll be bringing those things up, I'm sure, in the press conference. It's going to be epic, man. Both of these guys are great trash talkers. Both of these guys are great self-promoters. It's going to be a great fight, man. Like I said, this is the biggest fight in the United States. Everybody wanted to talk about AJ and Fury. That press conference would have had to been carried by Tyson Fury because AJ ain't no great trash talker. He tried to talk a little trash. I think in the Gerald Miller, Gerald Big Baby Miller press conference, he tried to talk a little trash. He, he was blowing kisses to uh, Gerald Big Baby Miller's mother and stuff like that, but he just that's just not his comfort zone. He wants to be the good guy. He wants to be the guy that wears the white hat, that being... Anthony Joshua. He don't want to ruffle rough, rough no feathers. He want to portray an image to the public that he is the all-UK boy, basically. And you know how they got the all-American boy here in the United States want to portray they, that great image to the public, you know, eating apple pie and, you know, kissing babies and, you know, shaking hands and, you know, signing every autograph that they can sign, taking pictures, you know, anytime they do any kind of thing to help the community, they're they going to make sure the camera's there, them, that type of person. I always worried about portraying a good image of themselves. That's the same thing I get. That's the same vibe I get when I look at Anthony Joshua. But the problem is that is when you're trying to sell a fight and you're a boxer, man, you got to say some things that are controversial. You got to have a mean streak. You got to say what you're going to do to your opponent. You got to talk that stuff, man. You got to talk that trash. You got to bump your gums. You got to sell wolf tickets if you got to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's all going to play out in the fight, but you got to do what you got to do to sell a fight. And that's exactly what Tyson Fury is going to do, and that's exactly what Deontay Wilder is going to do. So I'm very much looking forward to this press conference. I'm very much looking forward to the fight going down July the 24th. We got the undercard announced. I got a, uh, information on that fight. The opener, Jared Big Baby Anderson, will take on a Russian name, I'm not going to butcher his name, just call him Tereshion, Tereshion. But he's undefeated, so that's going to be the opening fight of the pay-per-view card. And then you'll have uh, F.A. Ajabe versus Frank Sanchez. That's PBC versus Top Rank. And then you will have Adam Kanaki versus Robert Hellanius 2. That's a PBC card, PBC fights. And then you'll have another Top Rank versus PBC fight as the main event when you have Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury, versus Deontay, the Bronze Mama Wilder. So the press conference is going to be epic. It's going down this Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, <laughs> basically. So get your tacos and get ready to check that fight out, man, on your phone or on your laptop. Get ready to check the press conference out. My bad, I said the fight, but get ready to check the press conference out. Uh, they, are, they, they are saying right now that they don't know if they're going to have fans in attendance so they'll let you know in the coming days if they're going to allow fans there. My suggestion is they should allow fans there. That's going to add to the atmosphere. That's going to add, that's going to, uh, uh, add to the electricity of the press conference. So they definitely should add fans there. But I know with the COVID-19 uh, protocols and everything that they got going on in uh, the state of California, they might not want to do that. But it remains to be seen if it happens or not. But uh, if it can happen, if they can do everything safely, they should allow fans in attendance. Because, again, that would add to it. This epic press conference I'm much looking forward to seeing and witnessing coming on June the 15th on Taco Tuesday in Los Angeles, uh, California. Hey, we will see what happens. We will see what transpires. Got some other news involving Joe Joyce, who we was prominently linked to a matchup with Alexander Usyk when everybody was falling for the banana in the tailpipe thinking that AJ was going to actually fight Fury, even though Fury had a contract that he had to fulfill with uh, Deontay Wilder. You know, they was talking about Joe Joyce fighting uh, Alexander Usyk for the interim WBO heavyweight title. And then whoever won that fight would, in short fashion, be elevated to the full WBO, WBO heavyweight champion. So uh, that fight is not going to happen. So George Joyce is looking for a dance partner. But what I'm hearing, he's going to defend his EBU title on either July the 24th or July the 31st. 
against Carlos Tackham or Tony Yoko. I would much, much rather see him fight Tony Yoko. Tony Yoko is an undefeated guy. He's got a lot of promise. You know, Carlos Tackham is, is what he is. He's a journeyman fighter. He's a stepping stone type of heavyweight. Not a bad fighter. He gave AJ a good fight. But at this point of his career and pretty much throughout his career, he's been, you know, a middle-of-the-road type of heavyweight, you know. Derek Chisora, Jared, Derek Chisora slopped, uh, stopped him, and uh, he, he won his last fight. He fought on a top-ranked card. He was supposed to fight, I think, Gerald Big Baby Miller, but Gerald Big Baby Miller, uh, once again, got caught with the PDs in the system. So uh, Carlos Tackham had to fight another opponent. He won that fight. That was on a uh, top-ranked card that, they was, that was going on during the pandemic. They didn't have any crowd in attendance. He won that fight, so... It wouldn't be a bad matchup, but I would much rather see Joe George versus a Tony Yoko. You got two undefeated guys that's trying to get a get a win so they can uh, possibly fight for a world title. I think that would be a much more appealing fight in my opinion. But if I had to guess who it would be, I, I think it's going to be Carlos Takam. He's got more of a name. It's more of a fight that Joe George should be able to win without too much problem. Tony Yoko is a dangerous fight. And uh, you got to understand that Joe George... Is a much older fighter. I think he's like 33 years old, maybe going on 34. So he's got to get in line to be fighting for a world title. And for you to put him in there with a dangerous fighter, an undefeated guy, guy like Tony Yoka, who was a little bit smaller than um, George George's side. I mean, weight wise, but he, I think I think height wise, they're similar. They're similar. Both guys are, I think, around 6'3, 6 6'4. 6 but it's just George George is a much more uh, bigger guy weight wise so but it will still be a dangerous fight because Tony Yoka can box he can box he's a very uh technical type of boxer you know very fundamentally sound type of boxer it would be a very tricky fight for uh, Joe George that's a fight that he could lose I think the uh, Carlos Tackle fight is much more uh winnable fight for him I say that fight between him and Carlos Tackle is probably like 90 percent that he'll beat Carlos Tackle 90 10 type of percentage now, if you fight Tony Yoka, that's more of a 65, that's more of a, you know what? That's more of a 65, 35 uh, percentage chance I give uh, George Joseph beating Tony Yoka. He might even be 60, 40, but I'm just going to say 65, 35. Tony Yoka ain't really fought the level of fighter that um, George Joseph has fought. He fought Daniel Dubois. He fought Bermain Stavern. Tony Yoka ain't fought nobody near the caliber. Even even at that stage where Bermain Stavern was at when he fought George Joseph, which was way past his best days. He's still better than anybody Tony Yoka fought in his career. So that would be a huge step up for Tony Yoka. But so, but I would so I would give George Joyce maybe a 65, 35% chance to win that fight opposed to a 90%, 10% chance to beat a Carlos Tackle. So we'll see what happens. We will see what transpires. But those are the two names being mentioned for George Joyce to fight on July the 24th or July the 31st. He will defend his EBU title. That's his EBU heavyweight title, European boxing union heavyweight title so we will see what happens and we will see what transpires but again the press conference is set for fury wilder three and it's going down let me know your thoughts about this press conference and, and uh are you excited about this fight like i am i think this is the biggest fight in the heavyweight division aj is fighting Usyk. look like that fight is going down in september look like Usyk is going to accept the rematch clause so we will see what once that fight gets officially announced we will see what happens with that but aj should beat Usyk. Usyk is a blown up Cruiserweight hasn't looked good in any of his two fights. Looked at horrible against Chaz Witherspoon. You know, Chaz Witherspoon is the nephew of the Tim Witherspoon, who was once a, a heavyweight champion back in the 80s. But he, Chaz Witherspoon, has failed to live up to the legacy of the Witherspoons, the Witherspoon family legacy. He ain't came nowhere close to being as good as Tim Witherspoon. He ain't came nowhere close to fighting for a world title, let alone winning a world title in the heavyweight division. But he beat him, and he was past his best days at that point. He wasn't even as good as he was, and that wasn't even good enough. He was past his mediocre best when he fought uh, Alexander Usyk. And then he fought Derek Chisora. You know, he won that fight, but he did a lot of running around. It seemed like they had a big ring that night, and he ran around there and stayed out of harm's way and was able to box his way to a unanimous decision win over Derek Chisora. He's going to, have to be much better fighting uh, Anthony Joshua. If he can somehow get Anthony Joshua back in that dark place that he was in when he fought Andy Ruiz Jr. in the Big Apple in that first fight, maybe he can do some damage. Maybe he can uh, maybe uh, beat AJ if he get him back to that point. But I don't think he had the power of Anthony Andy Ruiz or anybody like that to uh, hurt AJ and get him to that point where he has flashbacks of that fateful night in New York. So I'm looking for AJ to take care of business. His promoter, Eddie Hearn, a.k.a. Eddie the Conners, is going to sell the hell out of that fight. He's going to say Usyk is the best 
thing since sliced bread. Sliced bread. He's sliced bread. He's the best thing since uh, sliced bread, basically. He's going to try to sell him. He's going to say he's a dangerous fighter. He's undefeated. He's a pound for pound fighter. Yeah, he did all that at Cruiserweight. We in, in the heavyweight division. Now, what you did in Cruiserweight don't matter. What you did in the heavyweight division. It's a whole different weight class. And this here is basically a, a super heavyweight division nowadays. This ain't no just 70s, 1970s, 1980s heavyweight division. This is guys in the heavyweight division weighing 240 pounds, 245, 250, 255. And you got this guy coming up from cruiserweight, which is a 200-pound limit weight class. It's just a lot of weight to give away. And if you don't have that special power like a Deontay Wilder to knock these bigger guys out, it's going to be hard for you to beat these bigger guys, especially if you... In my opinion, his boxing skills are a little bit overrated. He can box Usyk, but they try to make this guy look like, oh, man, this guy's skills is on another level. Make this guy look like he on a Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather Jr. You know, level as far as skill-wise, and it's, that's not the case. Never was the case. He's a good fighter, but he ain't on that level. He ain't no better boxer than uh, Evander Holyfield was at light heavyweight. When Holyfield was boxing people and putting people uh, uh, booty in the, you know, putting people dick in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no better box boxer than he was. But Holyfield was a better boxer, especially a combination boxer. He couldn't fuck with uh, Holyfield as far as being a combination boxer when he was in his heyday in the light heavyweight division. You know what I'm saying? When they, you know, light heavyweight division was, you know, pretty much, I put the light heavyweight division, cruiserweight division, almost like the same division. It's a, little, it's a difference, but it's not heavyweight division. As Holyfield moved up from light heavyweight to heavyweight, and when he, when he went up to heavyweight, he knew he had to, Land shots to get these heavyweights' attention. He couldn't just box and move around and stay out of harm's way and stuff like that. He knew he had to mix it up with these heavyweights. And that's how that's the that's the uh, adjustment Holyfield made when he made that move from being a more of a boxer at light heavyweight to being more of a boxer puncher at heavyweight. Usyk is going to have to make that transition. If not, he's going to get beat when he fights the elite guys in heavyweight division. That being Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, or Deontay Wilder. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But hit the like button if you like the content of this video and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holla.